Hey, what's up you guys? It's Dorothy and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to go into chapter 7 of 113 Minutes by James Patterson. Excuse me, so let's get right into this video. This video may contain sensitive topics and foul language. If you do not wish to continue, I suggest you click off the video now. You have been warned. Five minutes and five seconds. God damn, these are some tricky sons of bitches. Special Agent Mason Randolph barely nods at the observation because he reached the same conclusion hours before he even stepped foot inside the bank. He came to it before his team boarded the Bureau-owned Gulfstream bound to Plainview, before he even took his cowboy boated feet off his desk on the third floor at the FBI's El Paso field office. As he told his colleagues, as they sped toward the local airfield sirens blaring, Mason was aware they were dealing with some smart-as-hell bank robbers the moment he heard about the simultaneous bomb scare on the other side of the city. But that didn't worry him. In fact, he was looking forward to the challenge. Mason had built his me meteorotic 18-year-old career at the FBI by cranking the Southwest's toughest cases. Serial killers, kidnappings, drug trafficking, human trafficking, both bank robberies and potential terrorist threats, though never a deliberately fake one and never together in the same case. Mason knew the region better than anybody in the Bureau, the land, the people, the culture, the criminals, and he knew how to use all of it to his advantage. He also knew just how much he'd sacrificed throughout his life to get where he is, he was today. At 41, tall and handsome, with a full head of thick, wavy brown hair, he had plenty of girlfriends, but none of them turned into a wife. He'd had plenty of kids, too. Kids, too, crime victims, that is, countless innocent people both living and dead toward whom he'd felt sympathetic, protective, almost fatherly. It wasn't the same as having a family of his own, not even close. He knew that, but solving the trickiest crimes, putting away the worst of the worst, it was worth it to him. That's just who Mason was. Today's bank robbery slash bomb threat wasn't going to be any different. While their plane was cruising over the Texas desert, Mason and his team reviewed the facts. Earlier that morning, a suspicious package was discovered outside the Hale County Courthouse. It turned out to be empty except for a handful of Tannerite illegal explosive used to make novelty exploding gun range targets, but that was enough to get a state police bomb sniffing dog barking. The entire block was evacuated. Every cop, sheriff, and ranger in the county was tied up for hours. Meanwhile, not two miles away, four armed men wearing gloves, hunting camo, and Halloween masks of four ex-presidents walked into a key bank and waltzed out with over 80 large. They disappeared into the scorching desert before the local dispatcher could find a free unit to respond. Yep, these bad guys were smart. Tell me something I don't know, Mason replies to Texas Ranger John Kim, the FBI's local case liaison, as both men step around the bank shattered glass entrance. Born, raised, and employed in the Lone Star State his whole life, Mason has met thousands of Texas lawmen of every stripe, but a paunchy bed ragged Korean American one with a drawl as thick as tar was a first. I think that's your job, Agent. You're the one you're the boy wonder from what I hear. Mason steps farther into the stiffingly hot lobby. The air conditioning had been switched off to preserve possible evidence, which also preserves the triple digit heat. The agent doesn't want to spend more than two, maybe three uncomfortable minutes inside tops, but that's all he needs. He scans the crime scene with the squinted blue eyes. He notices two spit shotgun shells and two clusters of buckshot some are embedded in the ceiling tile others near a splotch of dried blood on the marble floor i normally suggest sending these shots to the lab kim says but why waste the taxpayers money mason knows what the ranger's getting at the inside of a shotgun is a smooth bore unlike with a bullet running, ballistics on recovered buckshot rent casings is almost always a total wash. But Special Agent Mason Randolph cuts no corners, spares no expense. I wish I had superpowers like you, Ranger, Mason says, rolling his eyes. You can tell just from looking we won't need to be able to pull any prints and fibers and DNA. Should we bother running tests on that dummy bomb by the courthouse? Kim sucks his teeth, doesn't appreciate the sarcasm, doesn't like being called out for an oversight either. I heard you watch the security tapes, Kim says. In that case, it almost wasn't worth y'all making the trip. Get anything on the suspects b besides their heights and builds. Mason nods rubber. Kim gives the agent a funny look. Say again, their mask, the agent explains. It's the only lead we've got for now. He continues, witnesses say the four men had real West Texas accents, impossible to fake to a room full of locals, which tells me our bad guys hail from nearby. If your men want to help, tell them to start canvassing every nickel bat knickknack and party supply store for 100 miles. Halloween's a long way off. 
find me some political junkies who purchased their costumes five months earlier in cash. Kim is plenty impressed by Mason's creativity and ingenuity. It's an orthodox angle he would never even have considered, let alone thought to pursue so aggressively, but the ranger also can't hide his skepticism. Far be it from me, Agent Randolph, to question one of the most formidable feds in the Southwest. Then why do I feel like you're about to do just that? Kim forges on. You're asking for a miracle if you think. Here's what I think, Mason fires back. We've got five felons on the loose who disappeared right under our noses, who set a trap that all of us stepped right into, who, as my colleagues at the Department of Homeland Security reminded me on the conference call as we drove in from the airport, are smart enough to build a fake bomb, and Jesus help us if they ever decide to make a real one. Kim frowns. Fair enough. But starting with their masks all i'm saying that's a haystack and a needle territory and you know it if mason does his poker face doesn't betray it when we find that needle ranger kim and we will mason responds five minutes in the roasting bank lobby is far too long watch you don't get pricked that is the end of this chapter i will see you guys in the next video bye